Motorhead Garage, the program that each week introduces you to and shows you how to install the latest in exciting and innovative products for your vehicle. Now here's your host, Dave Dobson. Welcome to another edition of Motorhead Garage presented by DragonfireTools.com. Now you are in for a treat because this is a piece that folks ask about all the time. We're going to roll it again for you. It's from our archives. We've got a really cool looking piece right here. It's a workbench or is it a toolbox? I'm not quite sure here, Lou. Uh, what did you bring here from Dragonfire Tools? Well, this is our 20 drawer Midnight Pro Series workbench. All right. And this workbench also is a toolbox. How'd you get the idea? You know, in my own garage for years, I had a wooden workbench and I had a stand up toolbox. We all do. And I'd be, I'd be standing there at the workbench working on something, walk over to the toolbox, grab a 13 millimeter walk back, walk over, grab a Phillips walk back. And finally I got to a point where I was like, you know, I'm, I'm wasting a lot of time here. You know, I, I really wish I had my tools right here where I was working at. And when I looked for something like that, I couldn't find it. It, it, it didn't exist. So I said, well, I'm gonna make it. So how tough is it and how is this made? This entire workbench weighs in at over 1,200 pounds. Holy moly. So the whole thing is welded steel. It's not separate pieces, it's all one piece put together. For instance, this top is one contiguous piece of 304 14 gauge stainless steel with the ends corner welded and the drawer bodies are 16 gauge galvanized steel. The drawer pulls are 14 gauge stainless steel, just like the top. And the entire thing has a 14 gauge tubular steel frame on it. So overbuilt, built to last. And what if I want to bolt some stuff to it? Underneath the stainless steel, there's wood. So if you want to bolt a vise to it, no problem. We tell you that if you're going to bolt a rather large vise to it, like a big old Wilton or Capri vise, put a backing plate up against that wood. That way you get equal distribution of force on your vise. And we started thinking of ways that we could improve the workbench. And one of the things was adding outlets and USB ports to the backsplash. Now you can charge all of your rechargeable power tools right on the workbench surface. Every single one of our workbenches has six outlets and four USB ports on it. Cool, well, that's, that's the workbench portion of the program. Let's talk about the drawers themselves here, the toolbox portion of this. These drawers are so beefy. How heavy are they? Is it easy to move them in and out? Yeah, so as you can see with one finger here, you can move this drawer out and we've got it loaded full of wrenches. The drawer itself is 16 gauge galvanized steel, as we said. What's interesting though, is that we also have these top hat gussets, which run the entire width of the drawer. And those top hat gussets provide rigidity for the drawer, especially when you're loading it down with heavy tools. And how much weight do these hold? This drawer here, uh, it has the thicker rails on it. It will hold 150 pounds. Wow. And these bottom drawers here, these are all double railed and they're rated at 300 pounds. My goodness, this will stand up to just about anything. Yeah, can even stand in the drawer. Nice. <laughs> how much How much weight do those hold on the bottom? 300 pounds. I could barely stand in it. No, I can make that. I mean, talk about the center drawers here then. I love the, the organization here. And I noticed as I opened one of these up here, you had this, this blow molded case in there. Those don't fit in my toolbox at home. Right. So, you know, a lot of the blow molded cases, uh, customers keep for specialty tools, yep. right? So we wanted to make sure that we had space in the workbench for them, no matter what drawer you wanted to be able to put them in. Great idea there. And the problem I have a lot of times is my sockets and taller tools just get knocked right over when they don't even fit in the drawers, but you've solved that problem as well. Yeah, we have a deeper drawer down here that's roughly about five inches deep. Wow. And as you can see, we have an entirely full set of quarter, three eighths, half inch, and three quarters in this drawer. So with this drawer being double railed, galvanized steel, gusseted drawer bottom, you know, this drawer is going to be able to hold the weight of all of your tools and sockets. Now, other folks are making benches like this with, with the drawers in them. What makes yours different from, from the other ones out there? Well, there's really only two companies out there that make a workbench kind of like this. Everybody else just makes toolboxes. And that's what makes us different is, you know, this piece is an actual workbench. It has a backsplash. You can bolt a vise to it. You can bolt a bench grinder to it. A lot of the other companies out there, they just make toolboxes. But this is something that's going to be in your shop for a long time. It's going to last. You can set it and forget it, or you can put it on casters, the heavy duty caster set. Uh, it's a six piece caster set, and each caster holds 650 pounds. 
And we have several different models. We make three workbenches in this size, which is nine foot four and a quarter, and we make three workbenches in the seven foot model too. Whether you're a professional or just a hobbyist, you can save yourself a lot of time, a lot of space, and a lot of money. Check them out at dragonfiretools.com. We'll be right back with more Motorhead Garage presented by dragonfiretools.com. We'll see you in a minute. Motorhead Garage, presented by DragonFireTools.com, is brought to you by RockAuto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. And by Campbell's Custom Care, your detail specialist. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage, presented by DragonFireTools.com. We are talking about odors. Now, bad odors are everywhere, and they're especially hard to get rid of if they're in your vehicle. And now, Chris, yeah, there are other people claiming to eliminate odors out there, but what's wrong with those products? What you're going to find is a lot of the other products are using cover scents. They spray in a particular cover spray. That grabs the odor. It basically buries it or puts it deep down into the fibers for a short time, but that's a temporary solution. It's not a permanent solution. So if you start out with a mildew smell, you add some orange scent to it, you've got orange mildew now after a time, so that's, yeah, that's no good. Exactly. But dead scent kills the scent, and how, how do you do it? Well, dead scent is using ClO2 or chlorine dioxide. Chlorine dioxide is a powerful oxidizing chemical compound. It's, chlorine dioxide sounds dangerous. Well, actually, it sounds dangerous. Yeah. It does have the word chlorine in the name, yeah. but it's not dangerous. That's where it ends being anywhere near like uh, bleach, which has uh, dangerous byproducts. Chlorine dioxide, when it's done doing its thing with eliminating odors, breaks down to something as simple as water and salt. Now, how does it actually work? How does it eliminate the odors? Well, chlorine dioxide is made of two oxygen atoms and one chlorine atom. And what it does is it oxidizes the odor molecules by breaking off, and it has that selective uh, property that can break off and attack the molecules of the odors, um, breaking them apart and dissolving them permanently. Is dead scent something that's going to be used by professionals, or can you do this at home? Uh, both. Uh, this is actually something that is used by professionals. Um, there are some, uh, let's say, uh, professional remediation companies will use chlorine dioxide uh, that can use dead scent. We have uh, auto auctions that will purchase and use it to recondition vehicles before they go to the auction block and back out into the market to get rid of the bad odors. But it's also been designed to be safe for your average consumer to use in the home with no chemical, hand to chemical contact. I think the thing that's significant is the same kit is being used by the pros. You can use that same kit at home as well. Exactly. And you've got different vehicles covered here. You've got boats and uh, cars and SUVs as well. Mm -hmm. uh, why the different sizes? We find that there is a need to have a different size gram size depending on the size of the area being treated and also on the severity of the odor. Let's face it, for someone who has a basic musty smell, you might get away with a, a lower gram treatment pack, whereas if a vehicle's been sitting for a long time or say an RV or a boat for a long time, they have a stronger odor, then they're going to up their game to a 50 or even sometimes the 100 gram treatment pack. That allows the consumer to now graduate the treatment based on what the level of odor is in that area. We talked about odors, there are all kinds. What can dead scent eliminate? What kind of odors? Um, well, you, one of the biggest that, that we're thinking about is smoke smell. That's huge, we hear that all the time. But also mice or rodents that get into vehicles. Also it could be just food. People taking their kids back and forth using it or people driving while they're eating at the same time things get spilled. Could be pet odors in the vehicle. All these things, again we talked about mold and uh, musty smells, all these odors build up over time within a vehicle or within an RV or, or a boat. So if you name the odor, chlorine dioxide can go after and will eliminate it. A dead scent comes in a kit. Yes. Uh, how does the kit actually work once you get it? Well, once they open up the treatment, the plastic containment system here, that's the treatment pack. That is going to be laid flat inside the treatment area that they're gonna add water to, to the line, and then they would open the foil pouch where the treatment pack is located. Take that out, you're gonna see a yellow side and a blue side. The blue side is then placed into the water. At that point in time, the water is absorbed, it comes through the treatment kit, it will swell, and then it begins to react and off-gas, and CLO2 will then be released into the area. 
I know you said it's safe, but how long do I need to wait before I actually get back into the vehicle after you give it a treatment? We recommend a minimum of six hours for a treatment. If you can go longer, that's even better. If it's out in the direct sunlight, then we would recommend you wait until it's out of direct sunlight or in a garage, somewhere where the sun isn't beating in because sun will react with CLO2. You want to let it run then again, minimum six hours. We recommend if you have the opportunity, again, overnight is even better. And then once it's done, you gotta give yourself at least an hour to let things air out and let all that gas out of the vehicle. By the way, there's also a kit for hunters, so it'll take the scent out of your clothing. The deer won't even know you're out there. You can find that and all these products from DeadScent at DeadScent.com. And you can find more of Motorhead Garage presented by DragonfireTools.com just around the corner. Motorhead Garage presented by DragonfireTools.com coming to you from the Campbell's Custom Care Studio. Motorheads, I know you've got a motorcycle, maybe a golf cart, an ATV, a mower, something you put in the back of your pickup truck. We all know that loading it is a big pain and putting it on a trailer is not the answer either. This, and this is not a regular ramp. This is from Lodal and this thing actually converts your short bed into a long bed. And when you're done, this thing folds back into the truck. You can put your tailgate up and you're on your way. Now, Paul, what are some of the pitfalls if you want to put a motorcycle in, your, in the back of your truck? Well, one of the biggest things is you're going to go up on a skinny ramp that's relying on the tailgate strap here, okay? And usually you high center when you get to here or you fall off, there's no place for your feet. If you do make it that far and you get your bike in safely, now you have to fold that ramp up, put it next to your bike, which is always a prayer that you're hoping it doesn't fall into your bike and that's a pain job. So with that being said, this right here is a system that literally takes care of all that and gives you a rock solid ramp to go up. And most bikes are so long that they're sitting on the tailgate itself. Right. So how does that wear on that, you know, through the years? When well, eventually you're still relying on this, okay, to hold that bike on there. Cables, um, these cables corrode from the inside out. Uh, so you don't even know they're, they're bad. So you got two little green wires. If you could see it, you wouldn't do it, but you can't, so you do. And the next thing you know, this breaks or your tailgate ends up looking like a taco. So with a nice bend in the middle. And that's no good. And what are some of the issues you would have with trailering a vehicle like that? Trailers, uh, you're gonna have parking issues. You're gonna have to plate them. Your gas mileage is probably the biggest game changer. When you have a truck pulling a trailer, you're usually, it depends on the truck, you're gonna drop from 20 down to 10, 11, 12. Um, you got parking issues, you're always looking behind you. If you didn't grease those bearings, you know, your tire and rims coming off, we've all seen that. Uh, we've all, all seen the death wobble. So the load all is the solution to all those problems. Let's talk about how it works now. We started with the bike in the bed, and then what's the process to unload it? Well, basically once you get the back tire right about here, gravity is taking you down. So you're gonna let the bike do all the work, okay? Everything you do is in your hands. You're gonna brake clutch even when it's wet. Backing down is really safe, really easy. Um, you don't have to watch where you're putting your feet. You come down as slow as you want, 100% control of the bike. And then how does the, the unit actually fold out? How does the, the load all work? Let's start at the front here. Um, you've got this thing stored in the, in the pickup truck. Yep. How does it actually all unfold? Okay, once we take the wheel chalk and move it out of the way, that allows us to flip the front plate over and this will all fold up and go inside on rollers. Then you simply just push this in and shut the tailgate. Simple as that. Let's talk about the construction here. You showed me how this is made underneath. How do I know this is gonna hold up to the weight of my vehicle when I put it in the, in the truck? These are all custom designed extrusions. We have a variance of, you know, nine, threes, sixes, ones, um, but they're tongue and groove. Every one of these panels is tongue and groove with a leg. So every time the tongue and groove meet, the legs meet, we stitch weld the legs together, we captivate it on the side, and we still have a really lightweight product, but has a lot of strength with this tube right here. Um, and like I said, if one weld ever did break, it's surrounded by like eight other welds. Now, how much does this whole unit weigh? Uh, this particular one for the six and a half foot bed weighs approximately 250, and the five and a half foot bed that we have uh, weighs probably about 230. And the question everyone's going to ask, how much drilling do I need to do on my truck to install the load all? It is literally four bolts to install, does not install to the frame, it's four bolts into the bed, um, three eighths, and so once you install the mounting bars that go across, you slide it on this way, once you're past the second bar, we put a tie-in bar across the front, and it's only two bolts to remove it. So this will section in pieces, so you can take it out by yourself. 
um, in probably less than five minutes. What makes Lodal different from other ramps out there? This ramp actually right here, all the weight that you're bearing down right here is on the dolly, transferred into the platform, locked into place, bypassing your tailgate. So there's no weight on the tailgate while you're loading, there's no weight while you're transporting, and when you're done, it all folds up, slides in, you shut the tailgate. Now what's the difference between Lodal and some of the powered ones? I've seen electric ramps out there. Uh, Lodal is known to be all manual, so there's no motors, no wires, no bearings on this thing. So if you look at the battery powered ones, there's a lot of them out there. We're not saying that they're bad, but they only do one thing. Like if you're only going to do a bike, that's all you're going to do. You can't do an ATV, you can't do a golf cart with it. Um, this will do a washer, dryer, stove, refrigerator, snowmobile, golf cart, whatever you want. If you have any motorized vehicle and you want to transport it someplace, this is a game changer, I promise you. You can find it at LoadAll.com. This thing is amazing. We'll be right back with more great products and more Motorhead Garage when we return. Motorhead Garage, presented by DragonfireTools.com. Industrial workbenches with integrated tool storage. And brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Bulldog Adhesion Promoter, save time and money with Bulldog. And by Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. All right, motorheads, let's say you're driving down the road and you hear a grinding sound, maybe feel a vibration. Okay, it could be your tire, so you want to test this. You go on a smooth road, and then you go on a rough road. You switch road surfaces. If that sound's still there, it's not the tire. It's a wheel bearing, most likely, and you want to replace the entire wheel hub assembly. And when you do that, you want to go to rockauto.com, and you find FVP because they make the best wheel hub assemblies out there. Now, Derek, why do I want to go with FVP? Why are they the best? FVP wheel hub assemblies are designed with precision and quality in mind. We use premium grade steel and OE grade ABS sensors. And let's talk about those ABS sensors here. Why are they so important? Why do you want to get it right? Each individual ABS sensor is calibrated to that hub. We recommend that you use the cable that comes with our wheel hub assemblies. Do not use the cable that is currently on the vehicle. We have included OE mounting hardware and the correct connector to plug into that vehicle. You know it's going to fit exactly. Why don't you want to use the old cable? The old cable can create a weak signal, which will cause confusion with the ABS computer in that vehicle and cause the ABS light to be illuminated in the dash. So I know you guys make, make these out of quality materials. You make sure you've included everything. But what's the final thing before this goes out the door? How do I know I'm getting a quality part? Each hub assembly goes through rigorous testing to ensure that it meets fit, form, and function for that individual vehicle. Make sure you get rid of that vibration, that grinding sound by replacing your wheel hub assembly and do it with one from FVP. You can find it at rockauto.com. You're driving along and bam, up pops that check engine light. No worries, this AMS oil tech tip, we're gonna tell you how to deal with trouble codes and how to avoid them. What do you do when a trouble code pops up? Well, let's go down and get you a little scanner here. You can get pocket scanners. You plug them into an onboard diagnostic connector right up under your dash there, and up pops a trouble code. Well, that's a bunch of hieroglyphics. What does all that mean? Well, your first code's pretty simple. It's gonna be a B, C, P, or U. B being body, C being chassis, P being powertrain, and U is a network code. That second code, that O is either generic or one's manufacturer specific. Then we get into these trouble codes right here. That's an actual system. Fuel, air, metering, ignition, this is important. And then the fall. Len, we can avoid those check engine lights with a little preventative maintenance. It's like going to the dentist. We get our teeth clean so we don't have cavities. How can you help us? That's correct. Um, and a lot of times you can simply avoid that by doing some preventative maintenance in the form of some fuel additives. We've got a couple different fuel additives that we're looking at. Our performance improver or our upper cylinder lube are both up to the task. They are designed to help keep everything you know, clean and free from deposits to keep that from fooling the computer into thinking that there's something wrong because uh, the fuel mixture has changed or we've got some deposits someplace where they shouldn't be. 
And that's how cars work. I mean, it's all about that fuel injection system and actually the oxygen sensor. So injectors play an important part. We have to have the spray pattern in there. The oxygen sensor has to work. I don't want to crud that stuff up. I mean, what's the best way to do it? And how do we use it? Well, we've got options for you. If it's really bad or you haven't done it in a while, we would recommend the Performance Improver. That's a very concentrated additive. You hit that once every 4,000 miles. Now, if you've done some additive use in the past, we would recommend our upper cylinder lube. That's an every tank additive. Now, I'm all about preventative maintenance, and you should be too. Go to amsoil.com and check out these products and so many more. Our Motorhead of the Week this week, He Junju from Orange County, California. And just a couple of years ago, he knew nothing about off-roading. That's when Ju and his fiance, Ari Quintero, started getting on some online forums. And it didn't take long before they went to their first off-road event, and they were hooked. Their love for travel has taken them all over the Northwest, and this year's Big Trek wound its way through Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana with off-road stops along the way. And Ju says his 2021 Tacoma TRD is built for comfort, for overlanding, and even for rock crawling. So he's done a good job making that a multi-purpose vehicle. And he says he's loved driving through all the elements, sand, mud, snow, and ice, anything nature could throw at them. You could be like He Jun Ju and Ari Quintero. Just drop us a note. Go to motorheadgarage.tv and tell us why you should be Motorhead of the Week. And if you have a service or product you want to see featured here on the show, drop us a line. Motorheadgarage.tv is the place to go. We'll get you here in our Campbell's Custom Care Studio. From everyone here at Motorhead Garage, presented by DragonfireTools.com, we will see you next time. In the meantime, drive safely.